Let me give everybody breathing room.
into the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. So, uh, at this time, uh, uh, Madam Clark, can you call the roll, please? For Stump? Here. For Ferris? Here. For Eldridge? Here. For Travis? Here. For Travis? Here. For Cotton? Here. We're all here. Thank you for that. Uh, next on the agenda is approval of the minutes. Uh, I read through them, and there was one section on on page 15. And you guys, this this is the only question I had. Uh, I believe that we passed a resolution uh, rescinding using the uh, ARPA funds for that driving those vehicles. And that's not reflected in the minutes. Uh, do you all recall? I remember us talking about it. But I don't yeah. know if you recall we voted on it or a resolution or anything. I just don't recall. Okay. I'm with you, Jim. I remember talking about yeah. it. So I thought it did, but. Yeah, I, I thought we did. And in, in fact, the, the one, one motion on page 13. Uh, it's pretty similar to the motion on page 15, uh, and I, I thought that, that we also voted to do that. But uh, I mean, one one way we can we can clean that up pretty easy is we can just vote to rescind it today, uh, in case we missed it. So I'll make a motion to rescind that. Okay, uh, we have a motion to rescind the uh, what's on page 15 in a minute, basically. Uh, Motion to rescind the expenditure of those ARPA funds. Second that. All right, we have a motion by Jim, seconded by Dan, uh, to rescind uh, the resolution seven there, which is printed in your, your pack, packet. It's actually page 18 in your packet. Uh, to rescind that uh, that motion of using ARPA funds for buying those two vehicles. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. All right, well, that'll take care of that. So uh, I didn't see any other any other issue with the minutes, so I make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Uh, I have a motion by myself, seconded by Zach, to approve the minutes. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 You want to post? Motion passes. The minutes are approved. Thank you. Uh, communications from the judge executive. Uh, today's a big day in Spencer County. Uh, we, uh, this court decided that it was important to address uh, tourism and economic development, uh, as well as uh, uh, getting someone to help us with uh, grant writing. And our uh, work is paid off. And I want to uh, commend the uh, committee that was uh, part of the interviewing process uh, for your good, uh, diligent work. And uh, I'm proud to announce uh, today we have Miss. Uh, Lisanna Bird here in the in the crowd and if you would uh, Lisanna if you'd like to address us sure, please come to the podium tell us about yourself good morning everyone uh, yes my name is Lisanna Lisanna Bird um, I really to tell you a little bit about myself I do have a background initially in nonprofit also in um, uh, grant writing within that nonprofit capacity I uh, have worked in tourism and economic development um, for Bartstown and Wilson County. Um, I have hosted events. I have um, met with <clears throat> people coming to or potentially wanting to come to the community to start businesses. I have um, worked with um, many community stakeholders, including city and county. Um, I have also worked in the bourbon industry as well, and I've worked with the Kentucky Bourbon Festival. Uh, I look forward to uh, working with each of you and getting to know each of you. <coughs> Excuse me, I always do. Um, and I, you know, I'm thrilled to be in this position. I'm very passionate um, about you know, meeting with people and being able to tell the story um, of the county that you know you all live and work and play in. So uh, I'm thrilled that I'm able to be able to be in that role. 
Um, and I just want to thank you all for this opportunity more than anything. Um, and I look forward to helping and, and learning and growing with each of you. Thank you. Does anyone have any comments or questions? For yes, we're just glad you're here. Oh, I'm excited. I'm very excited. Any other? It, uh, while you're here, uh, sure. we, we had a, uh, we had a nice meeting earlier today, um, and I was uh, informing her about our plans for getting her getting her place. I know last meeting I said we'd have a bunch lined up today. Don't have them all lined up. There's still some being worked on. Um, but, and I, I actually wanted her to be part of uh, whenever we do make this selection, but uh, uh, she, she is fine with uh, uh, working from home, uh, working uh, maybe wherever. Uh, I explained that uh, she'd be helping with some of the FEMA grants, so she would be out at, at uh, the EMS building and, and maybe working Todd with you guys to help with these FEMA grants. So uh, she'll be doing a lot of work. Uh, Todd's a fellow in the yellow coat, He's a road foreman. Chris Limp is right behind you. He's their EMS and emergency management director. So uh, they take care of the FEMA grants. But uh, but anyway, we'll, we're all going to move forward with this. And uh, it, it, we've got a plan all laid out. We just we don't have to fall to piece, fall together. We don't have to fall in place, but it's not going to fall to pieces either. So we'll, we'll move forward with that. So well, thank, thank you. you for addressing us today. Well, absolutely. Thank you all for See, they're already going to work. <laughs> Thank you all. So, uh, uh, next in our communications, I have, uh, uh, I want to appoint uh, Dwayne Humes a constable. Uh, we'll get him, I'll get him sworn in, and there's a vacancy there. And according to KRS, I can uh, point and fill vacancies until the next election. So uh, I want to appoint and get him sworn in as constable, I guess, Will, for up your area. Uh, I'll be doing that here. You got his name or, or something? Yeah, it says Diane. I know it's that wasn't right. But, uh, Take yeah. either one of them. Either one of them. Yeah, I noticed that last night. But uh, so anyway, that'll be. Uh, That'll be up and coming. Uh, one other thing I want to mention, uh, the Flood Wall Commission had their election, and the uh, current uh, Flood Wall Commission that seated correct now is going to be the same next year. They all got reelected. That'll be uh, Dwight Martin, Jan Keeney, David Taylor, and Robert Black. And I've got to get those guys for in. Uh, should them. We'll try to get that done this week also. Uh, another thing, uh, I've got the budget to, to speak about. Uh, and you, you guys uh, uh, hopefully have a copy of that that we sent to you all. And remember, this is just a starting point. Uh, we're not going to, I'm not going to ask for a first reading today. Uh, the plan is that uh, we'll do a first reading next meeting. So if we can discuss over the next two weeks uh, different particular budget items and uh, different figures uh, on that, I can just give you a kind of a nutshell of uh, some of the changes in the budget uh, that are uh, versus a year ago. I value all of our employees a whole lot. Uh, and moving forward, uh, we, keep, we keep using that phrase moving forward today. But, uh, but go, going forward, uh, the cost of living has, has outpaced what we pay a lot of our folks. When we first came into the office on day one, if you all recall, we, we up to 2%. And uh, I know the cost of living is somewhere around six and a half, or that was a consumer price index. So I wanted to try to get to 4% at least uh, put in. And uh, I've got that in the budget. Um, now also, you look at, you know, we've got an employee that's been with us 33 years, more than 33 years, one employee. And then we have several employees that have been with us over 20 years. Then we have employees that's been 10 years. And I, 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 I have adjusted some of those above the four and a half that have the longer tenures. Because to me, it's not fair if you hire someone brand new that they're making what someone's been here a while making. And I, I think anyone would, would agree with that, that notion. So. There, there was a few that I made some different changes on. 
Uh, and again, I'm still working on that. I'm still working on that. But uh, the the hit the hit to our budget with with putting uh, these extra uh, raises on. Uh, yes, it adds up to some money. I think Brittany had a had a figure of 170 or 180 thousand that it was going to add. But uh, but anyway, I, I think it's necessary. The uh, FEPCO cards, and when we had our insurance meeting. Uh, it was discussed uh, currently everyone gets a thousand that, that has one and the way it used to be some folks couldn't get <coughs> the FECO card if they didn't take the right kind of coverage or the right kind of insurance so we asked uh, our uh, the person that provides our insurance uh, about getting it for everybody that's full-time because again everyone didn't have it everyone didn't have it so we were told that they could get it so we'll have some employees that have not been able to get it that are going to be able to get it and and then we added another two hundred dollars so you have a thousand dollars plus two hundred dollars so now everyone would have twelve hundred dollars on their FEPCO card <coughs> and then also the cost of the insurance that we provide we did look at a state pool and uh, I know we spoke of this last meeting but uh, the state pool uh, I didn't think offered the benefits that we hoped it would offer, at least at the time. Now, that doesn't mean we're not going to look at it again. But another thing, if we change mid-year, people's deductibles would go back to zero. So we're probably going to look at a, uh, offering that pool again this fall so that everyone's deductibles come January can start at zero. But uh, one solution that we... Uh, the budget will have that will start July 1 is we're going to go from $700 to $800. So a typical employee that has a single plan, um, when we go up to $800, I think they get like $30 a month out of their check, something like that. $15 a, a, well, a month, $15 a two-week pay period. So nearly, if, you have, if you're on a single plan, you know, pretty much we're going to pay all your, your insurance premium. So those were added to that. Uh, also, uh, uh, for the sheriff's department, uh, I know uh, uh, Scott mentioned last meeting about uh, turning in uh, the federal uh, drug seizure money, and that's a good good start on getting a couple vehicles. So I, I hope to have a couple new sheriff vehicles in the budget. Uh, now that won't be enough for two vehicles, but it'll be enough to get a good start. And then we do have ARPA funds that we could. Uh, to do the, the additional and then that'll free up uh, vehicles uh, there'll be some extra vehicles that uh, other places could could pick up on one like the EMS Robert we might get you get you a vehicle there that doesn't mean we won't look for other options but I'm just saying that that's a start uh, currently Robert has to drive his own personal vehicle and uh, and he's a paramedic so uh, that's one thing I want to look at Another line that I added was uh, the cemetery maintenance. Uh, you guys may have seen on Facebook that some of the work has been done around Little Mount. I know Roy Bales in our community, he's been active in helping get a cemetery cleaned up up there. I was at a, a GLOP, the uh, Spencer County Historical uh, Association had a meeting and uh, the lady said there was 100, 102 folks buried in that cemetery they cleaned up. So uh, I, I added a line of, uh, put $5,000 in the line of cemetery maintenance. Uh, if you put a sign at, a, at the front of the cemetery, kind of like the, the old Pioneer Cemetery over here, it, it's a pretty nice sign that'll last uh, in the elements. They said that was three, dollars $400, but uh, I want to put a $5,000 to where uh, if there's cemeteries in the community that people want to clean up and maybe need a little bit of funding, uh, I don't have a system in place. I just want to put a budget line in place to where uh, I don't want to give five thousand dollars to one cemetery. But you know, I'm thinking like five hundred bucks enough where you could pay to get a sign put up on the cemetery if folks want to clean it up. Uh, on the road barn, Todd, uh, we have changed from the cinders. Now we still got a big mountain of cinders up there. The, the, the highest point in Spencer County is on top of that cinder pile up there at the road barn. <laughs> Uh, highest elevation so uh but anyhow we we have completely quit taking cinders right todd that is correct and uh 
So Trimble County is actually taking them yep. from, from where we had them, and that's that that's helping them out because that was an alternative that they wanted to go to. But uh, I think <coughs> we will show that uh, uh, doing the salt will save us money, and while we transition, uh, we still got plenty of cinders to utilize. But I do want to include a, a build, building a facility to put salt in. Uh, it's not a $250,000 salt dome, but you can get a real nice structure, 30, 40 feet wide, 70, 100 feet long, that'll hold many, many tons of salt uh, for maybe 50,000 50, of concrete and all. So I have that type of figure in mind in our budget. So I know these are some additional things and we do have ARPA funds to pay for some of these things. But another thing that we have that, that we need to realize, uh, I'm not planning to raise any taxes, no additional tax increases at all. Uh, but we have growth happening in our community. Uh, insurance premium taxes will be, uh, in, will be more because insurance goes up every year. Uh, you all remember, uh, I was in the insurance business prior to to this job with the uh, with Farm Bureau, and I know how the insurance business works. When you have a lot of tornadoes like it did in Western Kentucky, and you have all those floods <coughs> in Eastern Kentucky, everybody's insurance is going to go up. So whatever we collect as far as a percentage, when you guys get your insurance bills, you see that it's probably 3 to 5 percent higher every year. That's additional revenue that comes in. And then the occupational tax. Uh, uh, Stephanie uh, Smith has been working hard. She works part time and she has one of the best lines as far as uh, uh, budget lines as far as income. She, she surpassed a million dollars of revenue on that. Uh, it's almost catching up with property tax. So we, we've got three streams there that, that should increase more than enough to uh, make all these changes that I feel are necessary and need to be made. So uh, the budget number there is still a work in progress that you guys have, those numbers. Uh, I'm still trying to, to understand some of them. I quiz Doug and Brittany a lot. And we spent a lot of time this past week getting getting these numbers down and, uh, and, and, and me, me sharing what I thought was important, which is some of the highlights I just mentioned. Uh, but anyway, uh, there, there wasn't any, I don't guess, Doug, there wasn't any cuts uh, really, you know, as far as anything done away with at all. Not really, but I would make a suggestion that anybody, when they're looking at their budget, nothing else, but their third quarter report from last this report meeting, you can sit there and compare what we spent, what they are received this past year, also with what's been budgeted. And, Right, right. You know, we got to... Doesn't mean we didn't make an error or something. Possibly too. Right, right. The, uh, it's, you know, what you have there is just a draft. And uh, by all means, the next two weeks before our next meeting, which is a night meeting, uh, we'll have plenty of time to answer all the questions that you have. Uh, and because uh, we'll do a first reading. We have to do a first reading, and then we have to send it to Frankfurt. And then they send it back, and then we do a second reading. But we're we are in very good uh, shape as far as getting started on this. Uh, so, any any questions any of you guys have on the budget numbers or anything? All right. Thank you all. Uh, that's it. Do you all, do any of you guys have any any communications that you'd like to bring up? I usually let y'all go first. I kind of cut in front of you. Now. Sorry for that. But uh, all right, here, hearing none, we'll go ahead and uh, we're down to E communication report from members. Julie, you are up. Okay, so we have a first reading. I'm going to do that one first, and then we've got two uh, second readings. The first reading coming for you today is the application of Mount Eden Christian Church Incorporated and the estate of Nathan Davenport for Susan A. Cox, requesting R3 residential to be to commercial on 1.04 plus or minus acres located on the corner of Mount Eden Road, which is Highway 44, and Van Buren Road, which is Highway 636. 
Commissioner Hunt made the motion to recommend a rezoning application to Mount Eden Christian Church Inc. and the estate of Nathan Davenport for Susan A. Cox, requesting zone change from R3 residential to B2 commercial on 1.047 plus or minus acres, uh, located on the corner of Mount Eden Road, Highway 44, and Van Buren Road, Highway 636. The recommended land use map of the comprehensive plan recommends mixed use. The change would be in compliance with the comprehensive plan. They've heard testimony against it as far as the location. Do we have the authority to work with residents of the Dollar Store development? As to specific landscaping requirements, there will be either an established setback or a variance in regard to the Van Buren Road side. The variance would be needed of 33 feet if the established setback is not sufficient. On Market Street, the variance needed would be 44 feet if the established setback is not sufficient. The building itself will be a masonry appearance, all four walls. A monument sign will be erected. The area for the storage of dumpsters will possibly be extend, extended to make it larger and will also be masonry appearance to match the building. Commissioner Brown second that motion. Motion carried. Again, that is a first reading. So, second readings I have is Paul and Cheryl Whitehead requesting R1 Residential Ag1 Agricultural on 29.66 acres located 319 Wheels Way. Commissioner Wheatley made the motion to recommend a rezone the application to Paul and Cheryl Whitehead requesting zone change from R1 Residential to Ag1 Agricultural on 29.66 acres located at 319 Wells Way. The recommended land use map the comprehensive plan recommends low density residential. The change would be in compliance with the comprehensive plan and there was no one there to speak well, wrong thing. We have heard testimony from concerned citizens, but I think it's clear we can rezone it. Uh, Commissioner Mudd second that motion. Motion carried. And this one is in Jim's district. Okay. I'll make a motion that we approve the zoning change as recommended based on the facts and findings and recommendations of planning and zoning. All right, so, all right, we have a motion by Jim, seconded by Zach, to approve the uh, zoning here that was listed. Uh, is there any discussion? All right, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Next, I have the application of Joshua and Lindsay Moore requesting R1 residential to Ag1 Agricultural on Lot 1, consisting of 1.171 acres, Lot 2, consisting of 1.188 acres, located on Shawnee Springs on Little Mount Road, Highway 44. Commissioner Hunt made a motion to recommend to rezone the application of Joshua and Lindsay Moore requesting zone change from R1 residential to Ag1 Agricultural on Lot 1 consisting of 1.171 acres, Lot 2, consisting of 1.188 acres of Shawnee Springs, located on Little Mount Road, Highway 44. The recommended land use map in the comprehensive plan recommends medium density residential. The change would be in compliance with the comprehensive plan, and there's no one there to speak against it. That was second by Commissioner Noel. Motion carried. And this is in Will's sister. I make a motion to approve the zoning change based on the facts of finding the planning and zoning. Second. All right, we have a, a motion by Will, seconded by Mike, uh, to approve uh, this zoning change. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? <coughs> motion passes. That's all I have. Thank you. All right, thank you all. All right, next up, uh, emergency management, Chris. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Busy two or three weeks in the waterways in the county. Uh, we've had three incidents over, I think, three weeks or so. Uh, two of those have been uh, cleaned up by uh, mitigation companies, one being the, the crash at Hardesty Ridge in 44 that spilled uh, a bunch of oil and gasoline into the creek there. And then last last week, I can't remember the day, had a septic truck run off the road at King's Church and uh, Dale Lane, and that has been cleaned up as well. Shared the bottom of the tank and put some stuff into the uh, the creek there. The third one, which was the first incident, was off Cotton Lane, and it's been uh, handed over to Division of Water. They're going to take over and uh, make sure that guy gets uh, everything cleaned up the way it should. Uh, I handed it out to you guys before they came in. Uh, our collections for the fiscal year today to EMS are uh, $658,167.27. And from January run until today, we've made 819 runs for the year. Let me interrupt you, Chris. When I talked about budget, I should have mentioned 
you guys, um, they in the last well the last court changed how you did your billing, mm -hmm. and I guess uh, you all got some help. Got a firm. We, we switched. We switched from a company out of uh, Lagrange, Georgia, to a company here in Kentucky that has a. Uh, I guess a better grasp is the right way to say it on, on what's going on in, this, in, in the Commonwealth here and what we are allowed to charge for and not allowed to charge for. It. So our collections at EMS have, uh, lack of better terms, have skyrocketed. We are uh, we still got three or four months left of uh, the fiscal year and we're well above our highest year ever right now in collections. So so the, the change has has definitely paid off. Yeah, it's been in our advantage. So thank you. And. Uh, Couple good things. Uh, we recently uh, got Spencer County designated as a heart safe community through uh, American Heart Association and all the little things. So uh, we get with that. The state road foreman. We got some signs to to hang as as you come into Spencer County. We want to get like the Spencer Jefferson line. We got a smaller sign put somewhere else. Not that we've decided on that yet. But uh, it means that uh, in Spencer County, where we're our EMS has, has protocols that, that satisfy the American Heart Association on the way we treat cardiac patients and that we're teaching enough CPR classes in the county. We have enough AEDs throughout the county. So, so it's a good thing. And uh, just last week we got uh, uh, an email telling us we've been designated as a, uh, uh, I don't know what I say, our pediatric designation through K-Beams, which means that our, our protocols and our transports for uh, pediatric patients exceeds the uh, KB standard, so, uh, so we get recognized with that at the uh, upcoming state EMS conference in September. So. What is the update with our alert system? Is it completely up? Almost what? I've been it is almost. I've got to finish a class through uh, FEMA to get us hooked to the iPods. I've just been busy. I haven't had time to get to that. It's a, like a three hour online class. But uh, once all this weather came in, we'll be doing damage assessment and then playing at creeks lately. So. Okay, just get some time to get that. Uh, we've we've sent out uh, several alerts to the people that have signed up. We need to continue pushing out for people to sign up, but uh, but it is up and running. It's uh, so I assume you'll have that part your class done in the next couple of weeks. Trying trying to, try to get to that, yes sir. So yeah, we the uh, we we've got the. Uh, so FEMA has granted us access. We just got to finish this class. So it's like a three-hour online class. So, so I just got to get to that. Yeah. Well, let, you know, let, let's try to get get that get that up and running to be complete. Uh, I, I I got on my phone a few of these wrecks. Did you you guys get some of these wrecks? Yeah, one of those. Close the road. Close the road. Yeah. yeah. Road. So those are what we send out locally. So so we want. Like it's already the iPod side's already working for like when weather service pushes stuff out. So if it has worked in the previous uh, events when we had a tornado warning, it went out through there. Yeah. And uh, so that that is working completely on, on their end. But it's not going to finish this class for it to work on our end where we can push out like missing persons and that stuff. But it is uh, it's it's linked to the emergency management Facebook page. So anytime. They send an iPods or a weather update through the uh, the alert system. It also gets that page, so it's working as it should. We just uh, knock on wood, haven't had enough severe weather to send out any iPods. So you know, the cold has kind of pushed it south. Yep, that don't mean it won't go back. But yeah, it's worked it. Every time it shook off, it's gone off through through the iPod mm -hmm. side of it, which is every time it's went off, I've been pushing it away. Yeah. That that online class you got to do is it you can only do it certain times or you can just do it when you got three just, hours. Just get it right at three hours. All right. All right. So then, then, then you got to take a little test at the end of it. So it's all right. It's not hard. It's just get it yeah, we can probably get that this week. Hopefully so. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Chris. Uh, safety committee. Dan. Uh, nothing to report. All right. Solid waste, Jim. But nothing to report. I got a, a something right there. Karen and I have been uh, talking about uh, getting a dumpster to where uh, people can bring in junk in a county. So right now you can load your truck up with junk, go over to Shelby Hill, they weigh you, they dump you, they weigh you on the way out and you pay, I don't know, a lot of people say $20, $30 for a load of junk. 
All right. So we're not going to build a multi-million dollar facility like the Shelbyville has to collect junk, but we're going to try to do something similar. Uh, Karen and I have talked with the Runke about getting a shorter dumpster and we actually uh, changed the configuration in her, I don't know if you guys noticed the way her blocks are stacked. She had a little, like a little corner that was a scrap. You didn't have to have extra blocks, you just put these blocks out here. So we made more space, put some rocks in there, <coughs> and then uh, she can park her trailers and lock them up. But we're, we're trying to come up with a plan that will work, and we're getting close, getting close. But uh, we, can, we can get it's so much money, it's a couple hundred dollars to roll a dumpster off. And then when it gets full of junk, they take it, they weigh it, and they charge us by the ton. So uh, if, if you guys, unless you guys are opposed to this, this thinking that, that we had, Karen and I have, let's say 20, 20 trucks come in and bring junk, uh, we might charge 20 bucks. And then when it gets weighed, it might be 18 bucks, it might be 22 bucks, but we're going to try to come up with that. And I may have mentioned that to you guys already, but we're a little closer to, to getting to that point. Uh, we can't offload it. We got to, people have to put it in the dumpster. So we're work, working on that. And then we did get, uh, I, I did get Lee in a dumpster that locks, uh, and it sits out behind the courthouse beside the big dumpster we have. So she, she can, and, and only she uses that dumpster, so. Uh, but, and I think Karen said we got that one free because we're allowed so many dumpsters as, as a county. So anyway, we'll, I'll check in on that. And also, we've got the dates for a, a tire amnesty this month. And uh, I wrote them on my calendar, Todd, I don't, you remember, we, we picked the dates, uh, it's 26 and 27. 26 and 27, that's a Friday and a Saturday. Mm -hmm. yeah. Half day on Saturday. May. Yeah, half day on Saturday. Uh, thank you for that, I wrote it on my calendar over there. Uh, but I didn't bring it over here. But uh, yeah, we're going to, during business hours on Friday and then Saturday morning. Uh, we're going to do a tire amnesty this, this month. Um, we have it this, we haven't decided how we're going to limit it or not limit it for right now, but I guess we'll take whatever we can take there in those hours. And then uh, this fall, if someone in a community has a lot of tires, uh, it'd be nice if you bring a few of them this spring and then bring the rest of them this fall. Uh, we, we're, we applied for that $4,000 uh, tire amnesty grant, but we may not get it till July. So we may have to pay for this amnesty out of our own pockets, and it's about three thousand dollars a semi-load to haul it off, which is what it was last year. But when we get to four thousand dollars, we'll have another tire amnesty and use it. So besides sitting doing nothing, I decided it was best to go ahead and get this get this going, and then we'll whatever money we can get up for a grant for a tire amnesty, we'll spend it on a tire amnesty. Uh, just don't know what year it'd be, but we'll spend it. So, Mike. Is this going to be at the road bar? Yes. And their business hours are? On Friday, it's going to be uh, uh, from 8 to 3 o'clock. <coughs> 8 to 3? Yeah, and then it'll be 8 to, 8 to noon on, on Saturday. Saturday. All right, thank you. <coughs> I didn't have a note, but I just remembered that I was aiming to bring it up, but I had forgotten to bring it up. But anyway, we got that covered. Any questions on that? So we just want to make sure the community knows that we hear you and we're, we're going to do it in May. So, all right. One thing on the uh, dumpster that you were talking about. So I think we need to specify no yard waste or wood products because Shelby County will take those free. So uh, yeah, they, again, we don't want to fill it up with shrubs and stuff. That right. And, and, and the, the dumpster that we have at the uh, over Karen's, it'll be behind our gate. So it's not going to be a 24-7 place to put junk. And whenever someone comes in, it's, it's going to be more work on Karen and her bunch. But 
when the guy comes in with a bunch of tires, we're not going to take them. When they come in with uh, chemicals, we're not going to take them. And then if they come in with scrap, they'll segregate it and put those scrap in the scrap pile and throw the junk in the junk pile. Uh, that's kind of my plan as to uh, have it going. But yeah, thanks for, for pointing that out, Dan. You're exactly right. Some Another thing I had been thinking about, Todd, I don't know if y'all have ever had this, but, uh, you know, we, we we still have that pile up at the, the, the sticks and things from storm damage. And, uh, I mean, we're, we're still under a state of emergency. I haven't lifted that. In fact, I extended it until uh, January. But uh, so, something that I might look at in the future is, is for Spencer County residents uh, during business hours, uh, maybe have a place or have a place twice a month or something where they can bring limbs and stuff grass clippings and that that kind of thing but we'll discuss that down the road so all right anything else on solid waste no good all right thank you <coughs> veterans dan uh nothing to report just uh they are uh we have two gun raffles going on now one through the the new uh, veterans organization they have a really nice Henry rifle. <coughs> <laughs> <They're hot. laughs> and then the uh, AMVETs still have the uh, uh, Remington 870 shotgun. So if anybody wants a chance, they're $5. I have plenty of them. So uh, that's, that's about it. And we did, like I said, they did get fountain working on the Veterans Memorial. And that's great. So all that's. Uh, all right, thank you. Uh, equipment committee, Zach. Uh, yeah, I got a few things here. Um, the good news we got uh, one of the new F 550s is on at the road barn, and they're, they're using they've got a temporary wood plow so they can use it driving around. Um, Keith just talked to Keith at the airport meeting there, but we're uh, working on some folks to get the uh, night drive to bed relined from Maverick, working on those estimates. Um, and then we, there's an auction coming up, the Jules auction up on the hill. We're going to try to get a few, few pieces of equipment surplus. The recycling center's got some skid steer, new skid steer tires and rims down there. Um, then she's got a little like nine, ten foot little, little bump fish car that I guess was stolen at one point. Um, we, been recovered and we'll pick it up there surplus it. Um, the uh, parks department um, has a trailer that was uh, they were using to pull their lawnmowers with and the previous court has served they've already surplus or something but we're trying to make sure that it's it been surplus but we still set up our drill bar and hadn't been moved so we're gonna get it out there and get down there because the fuel's off and we'll have it took care of. Sheriff's department's got some a uh, few repossessions are taken up um, to be sold to. Um, and then I, I did have a question to throw at the court too. Uh, the <coughs> Bico, the JC Bico Road Department has up there. Um, right now it's in good operating order, it's working. But parts are hard to come by for that thing. It's going to be a matter of time before it, uh, something happens to it to go down and we're going to be trying to buy it. Talked to Keith up there a little bit about it. Something they think we could probably get by with because we bought the new skid steer. Uh, if something came up, uh, we could always bring a bike out. Just kind of want to throw it up there to y'all, see what y'all kind of thought about it. Uh, if y'all want to try to surplus it, you know, now's a good time. If y'all want to keep it, that's fine too. So um, I guess we need a motion to surplus everything on the list other than the bike hole. We'll do that separate. So I'll make a motion that we surplus the equipment that I mentioned, the 16-foot bump pitch trailer from the parks department and the equipment from the, from the recycling center, the 10-foot trailer and the skid steer tires. Second. All right, we have a motion by Zach, seconded by Mike, to surplus these items that were listed. Uh, this doesn't include the backhoe. No, it does not we, include the backhoe. And the uh, sheriff's items, Scott, do you have those specific <clears throat> They're just a repossession. We don't have to They're confiscation, not yeah. repossession. Okay. Uh, one, of them, yeah. one of them is from a drug case that we awarded the van. I'm yeah. still working on finding out whether we get to keep all the equipment, tools and stuff that's inside of it. The tools and stuff inside the van is probably worth more than the van. The other item is a, a red and white boat that was left out on Old Ashes Creek Road for 
months and months and months. If we can't find the owner, uh, we're going to try to get a court order so we can go ahead and uh, dispose of that. We left it out there for a long time, put stickers on it, uh, contacted the previous owner. He said, I sold it two years ago, and he said, I don't want to got that. And we can't find the guy. Uh, we've run it on uh, Facebook several times. I always claimed it, so we we'll try to sell it. No, that money that he used it from those sales bills to drug seizure. Yeah. 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 It'll go to the state drug seizure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know we need, we'll have a specific list, and Lynn, uh, we'll get you that list you. of all those specific items. <clears throat> so, uh, was it two trailers? Yeah, it's a 16 foot bumper hitch trailer from the park department. It's been wrecked, uh, been, been fixed, uh, but, uh, the uh, actual the actual that's been underneath there with the previous court just shows just the surplus it and buy the park department another trailer, and then the trailer never really gets the out of here. It's still there. Yeah. So, and then another little trailer, just like a nine, pin, nine ten foot trailer that they use specifically to help with uh, hauling cardboard and recycling material from the school. Uh, since then, they've gotten some better ways to do that, so they're not using the trailer. The trailer was stolen at one point. Uh, and then the trailer, so they still want to be careful to keep it out of the way. So. But anyway, and then the, the, the auction up, up at uh, Jules is, I think, the 13th. Yeah. So that'll be right. before we meet him. Yeah. So, all right, any other questions on the surplus items? We just have to, we have to uh, vote and then uh, pass it and then it has to be ran. Yeah. Yeah, well, we've got time to get ahead and pay for yeah. it. this week. Well, we can put it in next week to miss this week. Yeah. So, all right, all right. Any other questions on the, the motion to surplus these items? All right, here none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Zach, for your work on the equipment. Anything else on equipment? Uh, we're going to sign for the surplus tobacco. Yeah, I was going to say, if y'all want to talk about that, I mean, that's just. I mean, I've got a tobacco and a skid loader. Do you think you need tobacco? There's kind of them. There's kind of them here. Like I said, it's just something that we've kind of talked about. It's in good working order, it's, but it's, it's, they don't even, you can't even look at look the model up and already make the model. Mm -hmm. It's made in Britain. Uh, it's going to be one of those things that something's going to build down on it, and then we're not going to be able to get parts for it. And there it is. So, okay. Do we use eBay to look for parts? They have an industrial Yeah, we do. That, that we do. We, I mean, we used to buy a ton of parts <clears> but, off of eBay. That uh, were out mm -hmm. models that were no longer made again. So, I'm, not a, I'm not a huge fan of the rent equipment. You spend that money and you don't own anything. But, you know, I'd like to limit our rate of purchases. Maybe. I'm not saying we're going to buy something. I'm going to buy something right back. No, I'm with you. I'm just saying that my, my, my thoughts on initially is, you know, we, we purchased this skid steer. Maybe we should try to replace one thing kind of each year. Well, my thought process is they got a tobacco and a bobcat, and that takes care of what a tobacco does. Well, you see, sell the tobacco and it helps pay for the skid loader. Oh, it doesn't. Yeah, it does. No, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. The reason being is because, say, if we're in a, a FEMA situation where I've got my tobacco somewhere else and I need to do ditch work with some another piece, now I have a tobacco I can do ditch work with. Move the tobacco. Okay, so that only goes to one one place. Y'all are going to be working two places at the same time? We do it now. Uh, well, I'm saying maybe they just try to push through another year. Well, I say if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You just, let's just use it until it goes down, then we'll make that decision. You know, so, right? Well, I mean, I mean, you bring up a good point, too. I mean, you might still run to get more out of it. The SCB stuff down so good, anyway. <laughs> Zach and I were talking about it, and my, my thought was, uh, uh, Whenever it does lay down, hopefully, surely it won't be the engine. And hopefully it won't be the transmission. I know last last problem we had a month or two ago was in that hydraulic pool. But we got it lined out. So I feel like something that goes down won't be the engine or the transmission. Well, it's one of the starter. The starter went out of that thing a couple of years ago. Can you get a starter? Thing about it, it was going to take us like 30 to, uh, yeah. to 45 days coming from overseas uh, uh, to get it. And now with the COVID situation and 
you know, it's it's taken us a year and a half now to even get a 554 truck. Uh, and I haven't looked at my emails this morning, but uh, it came in yesterday. I think the other two are are ordered. I've got we've got my email that was sent to me. Yeah, and he brings up a good point. We're going to have to, we need to go ahead, and Zach and I have had this discussion, go ahead and get our beds on order, get our beds figured out, because we already got one truck. We need to get the other three beds figured out pretty soon. Oh, yeah, well, you know, I'm kind of, you know, Will said, you know, I mean, you know, when we're kind of on this business, I'd like, I'd like to have another track hole. I'd like to have another back hole. I'd like to have a trencher. I'd like to have a but what I want, what my pocket book can stand is two different things. And uh, as far as, so we need to consider that. And then uh, what you was talking about, I wanted to talk to Zach, I wanted to bring it. Is there anything that we can repurpose off the trucks that we have now to put on these new trucks that are coming in? Or are we just we're getting rid of the whole shebang and no, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not swapping anything else. Well, we're not getting rid of that truck. We're not getting rid of that truck. Uh, we're rid of uh, truck. Uh, oh, here's, we're, we're just adding two? Okay. Well, the, the truck, we're talking about those new trucks that the previous right. quarter pop bought. We've got one of those up here now. Uh, the right seat fish we have got one. We've got the license plate, got it going, or driving. Uh, that's what he's talked about in those days. We're not going to pull anything off of the other we got. Okay, so I, okay. I didn't know if they were replacing or if we were just no, adding to we were adding to Okay. It's, it's, it's new, new trucks, new beds. New, 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 new. I think you said that before. How many 550s do we have now? We've got three. Um, not counting this new one. Uh, three, right? Three, four, four, three. No, the 550, uh, the new one counts three. Yeah. So you got three yeah, and I've got two. two. Two so F two fifties and one F three fifty. Will you have enough men to operate all these trucks? At the same I am time? in the process of trying to hire people, and it's you know I think we're going to have very difficult. F five fifties floating around, and we got people to drive it. That's what it looks like. Well, at the time I had when we ordered, like I said, we had personnel that was here. So well, and, and then when Zach and I had this conversation too. Uh, you know what we may do down the road is is get rid of the worst 550, the oldest one, and uh, maybe get a, a bigger truck. Of course, they'll have to have a CDL guy. Maybe get one truck that's a little bigger. But on that on that backhoe, my, my thought was the, uh, the, the backhoe we got, the way it sits right now at an auction, I mean, I see stuff at auctions all the time, 10, 20,000, if it's sitting there running and transmission pulling but something else broke or if it was sitting there running and the transmission wasn't pulling it still probably bring you know it might be a five thousand dollar discount so we can use it till then it's kind of my philosophy on the backhoe we'll just keep using it until it breaks down the, the good thing is if it does break down we still got the mini excavator and the skid holder to, to pull us through and and those those will be needed when we do this salt coming Next, next season because we've got to figure how we're going to handle this salt. I've got a plan that worked really good, but uh, you know we may we may need to do uh, uh, small areas where we prepare for a storm. The big storm's coming. We take so much salt to one area, tarp it. Take salt to another area, tarp it, and then we need a loader at each facility to, to load the trucks. So just just an idea on that. Yes. Uh, uh, speaking of that, uh, the, send, the uh, senders that we have now, mm -hmm. how, how many seasons, winter seasons, do you right. think we have stockpiled before we get that pile down to the zero? Yeah, well. And, and the reason I say that, you know, if we're going to transition to salt, which I, I agree we should do, is that we need to get rid of that mountain of senders somewhere along the line, so why not use them up, you know? And maybe bring salt in on a gravity basis, but still use the centers. Hey, back in 2011, when I first started, like I said, I used to have a mound of centers almost identical to this pile up here. We went through half of it because that year we pushed snow every other day. It was a nightmare. So when I first started, but some seasons we'll push 10, maybe 15 times. 
This year we only push twice. So. So that's what I'm saying. What but we, as far as we just, use, just, we use the senders, uh, you know, as we go and 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 bring the salt in, you know, maybe on. You're you're still going to need to use senders or some kind of a, a, a traction. Uh, you can go with calcium. You can go with uh, the salt. Uh, it's only going to work till a certain temperature. We need foot traffic on it. We have so much canopy area in the back end of the, of the county here that sunlight's not going to hit these areas. I'll just give you one road, for instance, and it's in Dan's district, is Yoder Tip, or Yoder Station, I'm sorry. You're, you're lucky to get sunlight to hit that blacktop maybe a half hour, 45 minutes during the day, during the winter time. There's no flame in just cutting the cinders off. I mean, I know we're not hauling them, but we're going to continue to use them anyway. Yes, there's going to be areas. I mean, you, you take like Goodlett Hill, you take like Little Beach, or, or Big Beach, I'm, I'm sorry. Some of those hills, those drastic hills that we contend with, <coughs> salt's not going to work. Because one reason being is because the sun is not going to hit the back side of that blacktop sitting on there. So if you get ice that comes in here, so we're going to have use a type of manufactured sand mixture with it or some other type of uh, traction stuff once you get into this stuff. It's not going to be an easy transition just going straight over to salt. Uh, we're going to have our difficulties. It's, it's just like any, anything else, like a new recipe. We're going to have to figure that out as a county. We still have cinders. Now let's look at other options that we can combine with the salt that maybe makes it work. You know, a lot of your state roads out here, the reason why they look so good, you get a lot of you get a lot of foot traffic on it. It's called a friction friction from the tires. So uh, other than that, that's, that's all I got with that. Uh, Jim, back to your question is uh, if it was a normal winter, uh, what we have up there right now would probably anywhere between three and maybe five years. If it's just a normal, if I'm only using it once or twice a year, or even, a, just say we get push snow five times a year, depending on how much snow we get, uh, you're, you're looking in three to five years right now. All right, all right, we'll, we'll move on. Anything else on equipment? That'd be all I have. All right, all right, thank you. Telecommunications, Zach. Um, None of your report right now. We're still working on getting some folks for some new microphones and, and cameras for the meeting room. All right, thank you. Minister of Cold, Corey? Uh, nothing to report currently. Uh, obviously, as you all are probably aware, in June there is opportunity to amend the administrative code. Uh, no talk of 24% about adding some animal control ordinances to the code. I think it's vitally needed. Our office has been inundated, but our hands are kind of tied uh, in a lot of ways because the statutes don't give us much guidance, so the ordinance would be the mechanism for that. Uh, if you have any suggestions, let us know. The, the administrative code committee will meet, um, and then we'll uh, go from there. But kind of be on your radar since we are in May, and uh, the time for amendment in June for much of it, obviously, you can bring some throughout the rest of the year, but uh, there's that. Um, there is an agenda item on, but uh, we will discuss that uh, in due course. Yeah. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, two areas of economic development. Dan? Uh, nothing on that other than uh, Ms. Hans there. And uh, I'll get her hooked up with the, uh, or Brittany probably will, with the uh, current tourism committee and uh, kind of work, start working with them. All right. Yep. Yep. She's totally aware. We covered that this morning in our conversation. Uh, animal shelter. Dan. So we met with a uh, builder uh, earlier this week, or was it late last week? I can't remember. I think it was Friday. So, <laughs> Anyway, he came out and looked at the, our drawings, looked at the space. He uh, uh, told us that uh, we gave him the, uh, the drawings that we have. He said that he could take those drawings and probably get us a, a uh, engineering stamp on those drawings for the building structure. Uh, so that's uh, 
a step forward if, if uh, he comes through on that. Uh, he, they currently just do the building structures, but he said that uh, he was going to contact his uh, uh, boss and see if they had a, another contractor that works with them in, in conjunction with them that actually does the uh, interior part of it. So if, if they do, then we could, we'd be able to get a, uh, a full price on everything. And then, uh, Jim, did you want to go over the... Uh, yeah, I, I passed the recommendations of the building committee. Well, we met, uh, like Dan said the other day, and uh, that lot that we're going to build on, it still has a lot of two-foot swells and dips and places in that need to be graded out to grade level, or, or not level, but uh, graded out smooth. And then we suggest go ahead and... and, and uh, putting about uh, four inches of some sort of uh, gravel base on that 160 by 160 square foot area we're building and parking lot's going to be. Go ahead and do that now. Uh, I figured up it's about 425 ton of rock, uh, which would cost about $8,500 for the rock uh, from Hayden uh, at what they give the county their prices. And, uh, but we could uh, uh, just find us a local contractor that would uh, would grade that down and, and roll that rock in with a roller for us. So we suggest doing that uh, now and getting that, getting that started. And then also, uh, I've been in contact with a company called Land Imaging Services Mobile, who is basically, if you think, uh, we run ads in our local paper. Uh, we call these people, they run their ads, social media, mostly uh, to all architects and engineers in the area. Like any project that county government has. So, and we do have an account with them already, Brittany said. So I would suggest, uh, I think the committee, the committee will do that, we go ahead and get uh, put uh, some sort of information with Lent Imaging requesting uh, drawings for the pavilion and the animal shelter. Uh, that would be a stamped, you know, thing that we could have, get prices on what it would cost just for the drawings. Uh, and then we'd have to, once we get the drawings, we have to do the same thing for a contractor to build a building. I did, I did get one uh, quote from a company over in Negoshi, Kentucky, ar architectural firm. They wanted uh, almost $20,000 to draw the stamp plans up for the animal shelter as we uh, have it now. So, and he stated in there that uh, Normally, architectural firms will charge between four and eight percent of what the total cost would be for the project. So, it's a pretty sizable amount just to get the drawings drawn up. So, but I think we need to go ahead and do that and get at least uh, three on each one of them, and uh, then we can make a decision on which one we go with. And then also, uh, I'm going to talk with Justin over at the North Central Health District. To uh, this week about what type of uh, pump station we have to have for the animal shelter because it is lower than the sewer so it's got to be pumped up somewhat. Uh, uh, Harold Compton from the Waterworks uh, said get with Justin that he would uh, uh, tell us what kind of uh, pump station inside we would need there so that's all we have to report. Do uh Thinking about this rock, I, I got no problem with us uh, going ahead and voting on, on getting some rock, but at the same time, I know I mentioned last meeting about uh, getting some goals of work at Ray Jill Park 2.0 at the new park. Um, what y'all's thoughts about, uh, you know, we need somebody, a, a contractor to come in. I know we, we talked about volunteering and doing, doing stuff, um, but anyhow, what, what if we uh, were to hire somebody to come in and with the dozer and, and get that spot leveled out better. Well, we're going to hire somebody to be put the grade. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I agree. If we're doing that, I think a cart to have a horse. Well, then we don't have none of this stuff lined out yet. Yeah, I agree with that too. I don't think we need to even rock it right now, myself, until we're a little further along and the project's fixing to start. All right. You what get all that rock, someone will bring a load of fill or something in there and dump it out in the middle of it. Or mm -hmm. that's, is that still blocked or no? It's not no, blocked, right? Not blocked. It can be blocked in any time, though. Yeah. Yeah, but it's not right now. 
obviously, I get to, I mean, if you're going to put all this on, you know, everything should be on grade and, and your plan, you're probably going to have some sort of elevation, or, you know, on, on your actual plan. And, you know, then you might have to put 10 more inches of rock when you uh, can do that from the get go. You we know, it, 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 all this. Our figure is if we do that now, if we get it to grade and roll, <clears> roll up, four inches of that rock over that pad, uh, it would give. You know, if we do that, now, they, they give the architectural firms uh, uh, a nice elevation to start with because they got to do an elevation plan on it, a site plan anyway. Uh, and then uh, uh, our parking lot, we got we got to do our parking lot after the building's done. You know, so it's grabbing that book. It's already there. It's packed down from construction traffic, and uh, we weren't sure what they had a few more loads here and there to bring it up, but. Uh, it, it just makes it so much easier working conditions for a contractor to come in there with a gravel pad uh, and that's mud out there right now. There's no gravel on the top. It's, it's strictly mud. So, anyway, we're going to have to do it. To we're going to have to do it later. So you know, or we can do it now. We just suggest do it now because I think the advantage. Well, I know as a contractor work. doing this type of work, and if I come in and do this, and you call me back to come do it, I'm going to charge you another ten percent more to do it to come back twice. On, on a, that's what I'm saying. That's, if I'm moving my equipment two or three times in another place, you're going to get charged for that. So that's kind of the point of that is we wait till we get the site plan, the elevations, and the grades laid out on plan, and then we hire our contractor to put this grade. Right. That's, that's let, right yeah, let's let's get you know let's continue to work on this. Uh, well, let's let's go ahead and make a motion and see how the court feels about the rod. So I'll make a motion that we. Put the eighty-five hundred dollars worth the rock and not uh, hire contract at the level of a lot out. All right, so we have a motion by Jim, seconded by Dan. That we go ahead and uh, uh, purchase this rock. And I know you mentioned uh, and get a contractor, which that would be an additional additional funds. But uh, anyway, so we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? What's, what is the motion just to get the rock or is the motion including paying a contractor to level that no, the higher contractor to do the whole thing. And so you don't even know the price then because their rock know. price is probably going to be different because they're probably going to charge you. No, we're going to get county uh, from paying materials. The county gets their prices. <coughs> so, so the contractor just going to charge you later. We're going to supply the rock. They're going to supply the equipment to grade the lot and roll the rock in. Are there folks is contractors on the labor? You know, uh, is there any thoughts to just, you know, will Zach brought up the point of like, you know, after site elevation and stuff we're done, you know, but this is going to have to be adjusted, even if you put, you know, you know, you might have to add an inch, you might have to add 10 inches, who knows? <clears throat> Being it's not the final product, is there any, I'm going to throw it out to the court, just have Todd's guys roll, run up there, I mean, they got a roller, they can take their equipment and Put it out level and just have them roll it in. I mean, uh, that was my first thought, but I mean, we're still wasting material if it's way off. So well, I'm just. I'm going to advise not to do any of it. I'm but, just saying, if the court does vote to, to buy the rock, you know, what's what's the hurt from just having to talk to them? See, I'm, I, I'm, I'm happy uh, we, we can wait on this. Uh, well, we got a motion in a second, so. Right. We have a motion in a second. Yeah, we got a vote. But any other discussion? Uh, Madam Clark, if you would call a roll, please. Squire Stump? No. Squire Ferris? No. Squire Eldridge? No. George Travis? No. Squire Travis? Yes. Squire Cotton? No. All right, motion fails. But we still got to do this. We just don't, don't got to do it today. So it'll get done. I'm gonna yeah, yeah. get the order of the finish, right? But anyway, well, I just don't want to spend the money, then we got to spend money. Again, yeah. I think after we get the, the architectural plans, then I think, like you said, it'd be a good idea to do the whole area at one time because you don't want to start construction of the animal shelter and then have a bunch of heavy equipment come in and have to start grading the park area after that, and so. Uh, well, well I'll, I'll bring something up when we get, get a little further down there. So, all right, uh, anything else on animal shelter? 
Uh -huh. right. Building and grounds, Will? Uh, Joe was getting started over there on the brick for the courthouse. And then uh, I think we've been talking about the courthouse roof since we started, and today is the day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the roofers, adjusters, going to be there. I'll be there. I'm sure Scott will be there. And then he can probably speak a little more, but it's an AOC. You want to speak on them coming? Yes. The courthouse, bring that up. Yeah. Talk to them. The, uh, the sheriff brought up last meeting about the, all the entrances to the courthouse. Uh, I had a meeting with uh, the jailer and some of the sheriff's uh, office folks and with uh, the, one of the circuit judges uh, last week. And she has uh, equal concerns. There's too many entrances. So today at 1.30, uh, same time we're going up on the roof uh, or thereabouts, the uh, AOC is coming from Frankfurt to do a walkthrough of trying to figure out a way to get the courthouse safer. There's too many ways in there, and uh, the elevator is the only way to go up, so you got to, unless you walk the stairs. And the, the, the bad part is, Lynn, if we close the elevator, then the PVA and the clerk doesn't have handicapped accessibility. So we got to look about addressing that. Uh, so we're going to have that that meeting today and I'll have some more to report about that when we get a little further, further down the road. But uh, yeah, we have the adjuster and the roofer is all coming today. We had to get two, two people in the same uh, room at the same time and we got it done. He mentioned uh, Mr. Goodlett working on the brick. That, uh, that old door that's there, we're gonna take that door out. Uh, we looked at it this morning and uh, if you pull that door out, that whole wall might fall down. Uh, probably not, but anyway, uh, we may take a sawzall and just cut that metal out. Let's cut that door to the, to the old block. If you guys, uh, I know you've looked at it, but for the community, if you take take notice, there's the old antique brick. Then you got concrete block with masonry showing. A lot then, of it. A lot of it. And then you've got brown brick. Um, Mr. Goodlett gave us a figure of, of make you know rechinking, remortaring all that old old wall, and uh, but I asked him to give us a price of of bricking with a brown brick covering that old blacktop that blacktop covering that old block wall up with brown brick that'll match the brown brick that is in the back. So that'll be something in addition to what he already figured. But I asked him to give us a price, and I'll bring that back to you guys. So, but they, they's unloading scaffolds this morning. They're ready to get started. I told them I thought we should rip that whole door out, block it back, and then break it. Yeah. I'm not trying to catch you before I run out of time. Yeah. Well, we, we looked at it, and, and, so, uh, and uh, uh, Joe, Joe is the, the brick man. They decided that that, I mean, it's going to uh, disturb those blocks so much. Yeah. Uh, we, and the metal is not that thick, so anyway, we're we're still aiming to take that door out, so that'll be one less access. Uh, even though it is shut, it could still be accessed. Uh, but that's where the birds are getting in and all that. So, anything else on building and grounds? I think that's it. All right, thank you. Uh, Parks and Recreation, Mike. I spoke with. Uh, I spoke with Brian, I spoke with Scott, I spoke with Randy, uh, reference uh, the water leak at uh, the Waterford Park. And uh, I think we got everybody on the same sheet of music now. Uh, I spoke with Randy and explained to him that, that is, this is taking the entire fucking too long. Yeah. Uh, we don't even, they, you know, so uh, I spoke with Randy this morning. He's going to get uh, the plumber back out there with him. And uh, we stressed to him that. Uh, we want that leak fixed by the end of the week. Uh, so they're gonna dig it back out. They found the pipe, and then they dug out a big hole and found the pipe, and apparently a big old creek rock that they dug up fell back in the hole and it broke the, the pipe. Um, so uh, they have to fix that, and then the perp, and then they're gonna cap it, and then see and determine where the leak is, and they're gonna, they're gonna jump on that. And so hopefully we'll have more to come in the next, uh, in the next week, and we'll have something uh, more to do uh, with that, but uh, we're, we got the ball moving forward. I know that the, uh, Randy had some other things he had to take care of, and then, uh, but we got them lined out on that. Um, Waterford Park, as far as 
where we installed that piping on down to the creek, that's starting to grow up. And I stress with Brian that they need to, they don't have to do it every time, but maybe every third cut, and they need to get in there, and they need to weed eat that. I don't want that to look like a jungle. We spent a lot of money on that to make that look nice. And he seemed like he was on board with that. Um, like the, Mike, I suggested the other day to just get a rake, a garden rake, and pull all that mesh out of it. Just take, you know, all that uh, mesh is in there where they rolled that, that blanket, the straw oh, blanket. Yeah. Just pull it out with a rake and take a zero turn and mold it. Yeah, mold they can do what they can do, but I know it's a little lumpy, yeah. you know, but I know that... Um, it'll mellow out. It, it'll, it'll, it'll mellow out a, a, a little bit, but as that... Uh, I probably look for us, as it's closer to the fall, for us to have to come back in and actually grade that and make that look nice. But I'm talking about on that lower portion in between, uh, it's really starting to grow up. And I don't want to get to the point where they'll say, well, it's just too overgrown and we can't handle it. We'll just wait for the road department to come in with their little side mower and mower and you know, we, let's not get into that. So uh, uh, so we're on the on, on, uh, same track with that. And then I'll, as I told the court in the last meeting, you know, this about Ray Jewell, uh, I went over and looked at that. Uh, the striping is pretty much non-existent. It's pretty much worked completely off. It does have some cracks in it that need to be filled. Um, and it, in, in my opinion, it does need to be sealed. Yeah, I look good. Um, so um, with that being said, I think us as a court, we need to go back and I guess look at these three bids and figure out which one that we need to vote on to get that done and get that ball rolling. But I've changed the subject, but I want to ask you a quick question. Yep. Hey, Joel. And you might know the answer too. I had a couple people ask me, and I was there last week at the ball fields. That slide, the end of it, is off. Has anyone seen that? And there's a bucket sticking over what I assume a sharp object. And I've seen multiple oh, kids going down that slide, and I was cringing every time that they was going to fall on it and the bucket break. Or, or does, do you know anything what I'm talking about? Uh, we're going to fix it. Right, soon. I, I learned something about it last night. Right, well, this just. I just seen it the other day, and I thought this is a disaster. I learned, something, I learned something about it just now. You're, you're, you're moving while Facebook me. Oh, well, I just, I, she seen the same thing. I thought this is not right. Well, see, Brian, Brian came to me uh, just to throw it up. Brian came to me back in January, and uh, this playground equipment that we have at both uh, Ray Bull and we have at Waterford Park. <laughs> that it's composed of that polycarbonate material, obviously over time breaks down over UV ray exposure and weather and elements and that and other. So uh, he, but he said that nothing need to be replaced right now, but we needed to be um, aware that there may be replacement pieces that we need to start looking at in the future. Of course, he didn't come to me about that issue. And I'll, oh, that's I'll, I'll follow up with him and, we'll, and me and Scott will try to get that taken care of, but just to put that out there, uh, just so y'all know, uh, uh, over the coming year or two, <coughs> we're going to probably be looking at some expenditures to replace some of that yeah. um, playground equipment that was initially installed at the section of those parts. And it was, the, was it the slide that was? Correct. Is that blocked off currently? The slide's not, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But we'll that part of the slide is took exactly. out, yeah. uh, and there's just a bucket over it, so. I just, it just clicked in my head when he said, Ray Jewel, I think Brian right. needs to go there today. Yep. He Lost is. the slide off. Yeah, he, 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 we he are. Is. He is, we are. Perfect. So, um, is that just interrupted everything? No, no, you're fine. Go ahead. We'll get that taken care of. And, uh, but we need to go back and uh, look at these quotes on and we'll go ahead and get that lined out. So, you, you all, uh, I mean, I, I don't have those in front of me. Y'all remember we had three. Uh, one's 87, I got to pull up, one's 8700 to bid right, and then uh, one of them was the cheapest. cheapest. Bid right was the cheapest, the 8700. <laughs> that's, that's what I remember, remember. yeah. Fill that's right. Right. Fill and crack, seal it, and restrike it. Yeah, rubberized crack filling, seal coating, uh, seal coating and striping. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll make a motion that we go ahead and uh, contract with them for sealing and striping there at Rayford Park. How much dollars? At for eighty seven hundred dollars. Second. Mike, right. we uh, we had a motion then by Mike and uh, seconded by Jim sure. to hire. A, you make the motion. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. 
I made the motion, seconded by Mike, to uh, hire the bid right. bid right to strike and seal Rachel Park parking lot. Parking lot for the amount of eighty-seven hundred dollars. Eighty-seven hundred dollars. All right. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion passes. Thank you all. All right. Uh, I think that's all I have for Mike. All right. Uh, Farmers Market Pavilion Committee. There, uh, Jim. Uh, yeah. A uh, couple things, and I think you you probably got something you want to say about it too. Uh, uh, we need to get uh, the five acres, and still need to get two appraisals on that. And we were waiting for uh, some other land over to close to have a uh, nearby cop for that. Uh, I've got uh, one appraiser already gave me a price of twenty one fifty, I believe, to do it. And then uh, I'm going to contact the other one today. Uh, and uh, they're two to three weeks out, so nothing may happen between now and the next meeting on that. But we'll get the appraisals, appraisal, two appraisals for that five acres that we're going to uh, try to find. And uh, other than that, like I said, I think uh, we just need to authorize the judge's office to uh, put this ad with uh, land imaging about uh, drawings for the animal shelter and the pavilion as soon as possible and uh, try to get some quotes back on that for the next meeting. That's it. All right, but just uh, general consent, you guys do it with going ahead and getting the two appraisals at I mean, it sounds like you're going to be 2100 maybe. Uh, one of them is we, we may have already voted. I think we already voted to do that previously, didn't we? Well, we talked about it, but I had, I had two appraisers, one for 2450, one for 2150, but Brian Beard gave me the name of another person. He says, this guy is, you know, he's good. He probably, he could probably be cheaper than either one of those. So that's why I'm waiting on for him. But, he may be the most. We end up with three. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll end up with three. Probably. But you've already got two of them. So. Anyway, just you know, we're, we'll go ahead with the appraisers. Appraisals. All right. All right. Thank you. Uh, number fourteen, uh, the Spencer County Fire District. In your packet, it has uh, uh, where the fire department uh, reappointed the uh, male home Haney for three-year term. So I just want to bring that to. Everyone's attention, we don't have to take any action on that. Uh, all right, next, the uh, on old business, the health insurance rates. Uh, it's on your page uh, 45 there. You should have it. Uh, I mentioned that when I was speaking about the budget. Uh, the, per pay period, it, it, when you go up to uh, from seven to 800, uh, I guess we will, uh, if you all uh, will go ahead and uh, entertain a motion to approve going from seven to 800, and this will start on July 1. So we will go ahead and get this taken care of. I'll make the motion. Second. All right, we have a motion by Zach, seconded by Mike, uh, to go ahead and approve the, uh, the insurance going from 700 to 800, starting July 1. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Uh, you need to uh, make a motion then on the fifth go to go to 1000 to 1200 per year and to offer it all full-time employees. Yeah, if y'all would like to do that, that would be in order. If y'all would like to do that. Uh, I'll make I a motion. motion. That uh, <laughs> we raise the Fedco card from one thousand dollars to twelve hundred dollars, and we include all full-time employees of the county. Second. All right. We have a motion by Dan, seconded by Zach, to uh, allow the Fedco card to go to all full-time employees and to approve it to do that, and to raise it from a thousand to twelve hundred. Is there any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion passes. So is the insurance committee done looking at options to change for insurance now or? Well, for now. For now. Because I'm looking at this and that still sucks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for, for now. Um, but 
again, we'll we'll address it again, say September, October, uh, so that people's deductibles will start at zero in January. Single person in pretty good shape. Right. And I mean this, you know, looking at page 45, you see that we have 26 folks uh, that are on the single plan. Uh, and we could have a few more join up. Uh, but but anyhow, that'll, again, we're, we're looking out and we care about our employees. So uh, I'm, I'm happy we made those moves. Uh, next on old business, the two areas of economic development. Uh, I mentioned... Uh, that uh, she's going to be doing some work from home and she will need uh, a laptop, <coughs> probably a scanner, printer. So I would like to, uh, I guess I have a cover sheet here, uh, not to exceed $2,000 that we get to uh, Miss Bird fixed up. Judge? Yes. We need to appoint a nail. Evidently, what Nathan is saying. Okay. All right. Gotcha. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, let's let's go ahead and do this, and we'll go we'll go back on the. Uh, I make a motion that we can spend up to two thousand dollars for supplies for the new uh, tourism and economic development division. All right. I have a motion by Wheels. There, second. Second. Seconded by Mike uh, to approve up to two thousand dollars to get uh, needed equipment for uh, office and supplies. For uh, Miss Bird, the two years of the economic development grant administrator. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Thank you all for that. Now we will go back to uh, we need to approve the uh, term of a nail hanging for a three year term to the uh, Board of Trustees for the Springfield County Fire District. I make the motion to appoint a nail hanging. Three-year term. All right. Have a motion by Zach. Second. Seconded by Mike uh, to approve the appointment of an L. Haney for a three-year term to the Board of Trustees of Spencer County Fire District. Reappointment. Reappointment. Is there any discussion? All right. Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Thank you all for that. Now. Uh, County Uniform and Custodial Services, and I think we have Unifirst and um, just, got, just, got, just got Unifirst today. Okay. Well, I think they're here for a different deal, maybe. But they are all the above. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say that uh, uh, in your all's hiking on this real quick, um, you've got you, we've got those two calls from the University one from Springfield one from Springfield one that broke down very good so I had uh, Brittany get that told up and brought to us of course she brought it here just a minute ago so, so that's what that is so that would be the yearly what it would, what it would be yearly pretty much all right. If, I mean, if you guys would like to address this, uh, yeah, yeah, I can. You yeah, welcome. Yeah. Okay. So it, it, there's a lot of moving parts. First off, I'll address myself. I'm sorry. My name is David Shapanier, and I'm the location manager for Universe. We're located over in Jaytown. Uh, we've been servicing you all for around six years now, and all the different departments, along with the facility services, and which is the paper to sell air fresheners. Uh, we do your match, trash can liners, and of course the uniforms. And so there are kind of a lot of moving parts to this too because of the fact that there's also potential growth for the county uh -huh. as well as other cost savings. Um, so currently, like right now with, with Todd's division, you know, the uniforms they use, when we do an apple to apple comparison, um, you all are part of a buying group called Sourcewell. I don't know if you're all familiar with that name, but it used to be called NJPA. And so that means that basically with Unifers being a national company, um, they contract out with Sourcewell that, that, that looks for bids with companies like us. They give you pricing whether you're in Los Angeles, New York, Las Vegas, Louisville, Kentucky. You will all get the same price across the board. Um, what it means though is, is you all have to pick the garment style that you want. And once you decide that, everyone pays the same to buying group. Um, and as we look at this new proposal that we have on hand, from an apple to apple comparison, because Sourcewell did re update their pricing in December of last year, there is a cost savings, at least with the road department, of about 15%, which comes up about $1,400 if you all stay apple to apple. 
And what that also does give the road department is all brand new garments to start up with so that they can uh, do a brand new upgrade. Um, and if I take you down a different road, please reel me back in. But I know like in talking to Todd's group, uh, there is a different uniform style that we want to look at going to, which would still have a cost savings to what you're all spending today. Um, and I don't know how familiar you all are with Nancy. Um, there's three different grades, class one, two, and three. And because of the different laws and rules that are put in play by OSHA, right now, I can't tell you all what to be in, but based off the information that we have, Todd's department is actually in a long class. They're looking to go to what's called class three. And so with our proposal to still have a cost savings, if not a neutral cost savings for an upgrade, um, depending on the uniform that Todd and his department decide to go with, uh, we'd like to put them in a brand new uniform that's going to put them in the class rating that they need to be in. So if there are any questions about that before I move on, I'd like to address Todd if you all have anything as far as why you all need to be in that class. And a lot of that's determined by the roadway you're next to and the speed of that roadway. Um, and if, if you all know anything about high visibility and enhanced visibility garments, there's two different types, right? Really three. One is your normal run-of-the-mill uniform that anybody wears to keep themselves safe. Um, Unifirst picks up the garments on a weekly basis and we launder the dirties and bring back the clean. The second type of uniform is an enhanced visibility, which would be like a navy garment with like some reflective striping, which means during the day you can see the navy, but at night you can see the tape. And then the high visibility is that you can see the yellow during the day from far away and the reflective type uh, are taped throughout the night. And depending on how much reflective tape in the 360 where you're going to have everything is going to determine exactly where that tape is going to be placed. And that goes into the ANSI class three when it comes to individuals that may need to be in a situation where they're in a faster uh, speed of air what my coworkers are handing out to you right now is basically a few different catalogs for you all to see the different options that are out there for, for you all to choose from. But also, it does give a breakdown in some of the pricing of some of the new uniforms that the road department is looking to go into. So with this source well, there are other price um, advantages for you all. For example, we have a uniform catalog that we call a direct sell catalog. Anything that you purchase at any point in time, whether it be one item or whether it be a million items, you get a 25% discount at all times with Unifirst. Um, also, when we're talking with Chris and his department, uh, we did recognize, I know I'm going down a different rabbit hole, for our first day in safety division, which we don't currently service with you right now, we did recognize we would be a cost savings to what you guys are doing with Centos versus going with Unifirst. Um, that is also part of the source well pricing. Um, so again, I, I, you know, with looking at this proposal, there's just a lot of different added, added benefit that the county gets that may not just be in a uniform invoice. So like you all use our paper and soap products. All the dispensers that you all get are provided at no charge. And so what we'd like to do, if you decide that you all want to stay with me at first, off the recommendations of Todd and Brittany, I think our relationship over the last six years has, has been a positive one. Uh, Lenny, who you all had just handed out the packets, one of the things that he will be doing is going around to each department that is already receiving uh, Unifirst services, even if it's delivered from you all from one point of contact, and looking to upgrade all the dispensers that need to be upgraded, adding other dispensers that are needed in any areas that you need to have them added. Right, removing any dispensers that are no longer necessary. But we, we like to do this about every four years to eight years as we sit down and we hit reset with you all and figure out where things need to go to. Now that also doesn't mean that over time you all won't be in a situation where you have growth in the middle of the contract. You would still, because we do have an agreement, we would still offer those same benefits at any point in time that you guys need them to move. So I went down three or four different rabbit holes there for you, and hopefully I didn't confuse anybody. But I am open to answering any questions that you all may have about what we're currently doing, and also a proposal of moving this thing forward. Well, what what we have we we have uh, we we've had you guys and another outfit give us prices. Correct. And I spent about an hour last night trying to decide, make compare apples and apples. There ain't apples and apples. Correct. Uh, <laughs> Like, for example, uh, we, we had a need for a, a wet mop, a 24-inch dust mop, a 36-inch dust mop, and I couldn't find it on your list. So 
Um, what we did, uh, Judge, is we basically just put in pricing for you all, which you're currently getting, and right now you all do not receive wet mop service through Unifirst. You all did at one point in time, but I think you okay. all got away from that because you all purchased on your own and just threw them away when they were done. Where our service, we would give them to you, pick them up and clean them and bring them in whenever you a uh, question I have for you all is what what would we be paying you all yearly for this service all together, all the departments? <coughs> so doesn't that need to be broken down to just the uniform when you're asked that question? No, because that's not what this is. Well, I've never seen it broken down any of this. this no, you can tell us what it's going to be. So, so right now, if you went from an apple to apple comparison of what you had before to what you have now, if I multiply right now, your invoice is $193.12 a week for the road department. Okay? If we stay with the same thing, it would drop down to $165.08. And that's not including four paper hands, so that's just the uniforms. So if I take $165.08, if someone wants to check my numbers here, it's about an $8,500, almost $8,600 in what you would spend. And, and the reason why that's not a fair answer to give you, Zach, is because you do have incidentals within a uniform program. When someone leaves, it doesn't turn the garments back in, or if they do damage an item. So our program, what it allows you to do is when we start up service with you, everyone gets brand new off the showroom floor. That includes the logos, the name tags, the scan bars that go on the garments. And through that service, every week we pick up the dirties and bring them clean. Now, there's a lot of unknown variables that could happen. First off, like we said, turnover, damages. It could also be that, you know, maybe Mike is wearing a uniform. He's working, say, seven days a week, so he needs a set, a set of 15 sets. Whereas, Zach, you're working five days a week, you need 11. How I get that math is I take how many days a week you work times two plus one. So you have <laughs> one week in, one week out, and one uniform on when we do the exchange. You know, and, and also from six years ago when we signed, signed up with you all, our business model has changed as well. So one of the proposals that we're going to have with you all is what we call ongoing uh, insurance programs. Uh, I think you had mentioned earlier on, Judge, at Kentucky Farm Bureau, I remember when I used to live out here when we had those big uh, tornadoes that came through western Kentucky and ended up going over to Henryville and, and hurt that school. I remember my $500 duck hole didn't want that $1,000 and I didn't have any damage yet. What happens is what we're seeing in the uniform workspace is people want more consistent billing. So we've added insurance programs to cover damage, loss, and ongoing implement service whenever there's a turnover employee. You kind of keep your all's bills much more consistent, right? And in the insurance program, the way we look at it, it's, it's pennies on the dollar, um, but every garment is a different cost because of how much that garment could cost Unifirst, right? And so what we look at that is if Todd had someone that damaged the garment, you all don't see a bill for that because you're paying the insurance on a weekly invoice. If someone were to run off with the garments, you don't see a bill for that, again, because they're paying on a, on a weekly invoice. And what we do is we would sit down with Judge and Todd every six months to every year to see what the county has paid into that program and what you haven't used. And we either reduce the price, right, or you've used a lot of it, and we got to say, hey, what do we do here? What other steps can we put in place to make sure that these garments get back in unit first, or maybe you're in the absolute wrong garment to begin? So, my go ahead, Jim. Go ahead. Not to cut you short. No, please. My question is, uh, annual. What what are we going to spend annually with you? I think that's what we all need. Well, yeah. and, and I know it's yeah. Uh, once, can you give us a figure on what the Spencer County paid you? in the last 12 months. Mm -hmm. And then base it on yeah. that, no upgrades, downgrades, but what we paid you last year. Yes. Can you get that to us? I, I can get that for you. I, I just, we just renewed the city of J-Town in the same capacity. And you know, you're all, um, they get some things that you don't get as, and vice versa. And I know their spend was under $30,000 with us. So I can pull all those numbers because again, we're not just talking about the uniforms. I think your cycling center also has these items. And then, of course, all the paper and soap that you go through, and that's really going to be determined on how many ball games you have and the different areas where you have those dispensers. But I'm able to get all of that pricing for you all if you all want on the next just a, meeting. Just to figure what we paid you last year. Absolutely. This is what we paid you. Just, just, just for everything. Last 12 months. What did, what did Spencer County get? Can you make a note of that one? Doug probably has what we paid. Well, he can get well, it. Well, Doug, would you go to pull that out? I think it hinges on whether we vote on this today. So. Yeah. I say we just wait till the next meeting and get out. Something I'd like to see also. You talked about EMS using CentOS currently. Yeah. Talking 
could save us money. Yes. On that. So to explain a little bit on that, um, the road department has a box, and, and Todd, yeah, please come up if I'm incorrect. I'm saying here, you are the three box cab. Um, how many people work in the road department? You got eight. You're spending, mm -hmm. I guess, from two hundred dollars a month. I don't know about you all, but that's a lot of money for some Band-Aids and some Tylenol, $200 a month. Well, look, I understand that everybody's in a budget crisis, and you've had things go down in cost and come up in cost, and it changes all the time. What I've learned through my time is that it's very hard to bring everybody together and really focus in on the true price, as well as what you're getting for that price and the service component. Because sometimes it's worth paying more to get what you need. Because overall, paying more to get what you need saves you more money in the long run based off frustration, hassle, and maybe incidentals that you're unaware of. So what we like to do is we like to try to bring everybody together. And Sam, our first thing safety manager, sit down with Todd and looked at some invoicing that you all had. And we noticed you all were paying $200 for things. For example, when a box of band-aids are open, when the, when the delivery driver for CentOS comes in, they charge you for another box of Band-Aids even though you still have a box of 30 and still have 18 in that box. Right now, what our proposal would be is you get two boxes of Band-Aids and when the 18 are now finally gone to zero, the other one replaces it like a grocery store and you put another one behind it versus taking it out of service and just replacing it. Now, I don't know all the ins and outs because I'm not there every month to see the service, but I do think from a cost uh, comparison, there's a lot of money to be saved within the county if we're able to look at things that I can only focus on what we deal with and kind of nickel and down to death and ask yourself, is there really a need? Now, that doesn't mean that there wasn't a burn and ice packs were needed and that month was a $200 bill, but it looks like almost every month it's about the same price. Where we would say with a, a company with eight employees, we probably would fill up that cabinet maybe every two, if not every three months. So you see what I'm saying? So I think there's at least a $1,200 savings for you. Um, you know, we talked about the AEDs, I think you had brought those up. So if you stay with Unifirst, Unifirst is willing to donate an AED to the county to be used anywhere you want to. And AEDs are looked at in two different ways with first aid safety. One, you purchase them and they're yours, and then you maintain them moving forward, right? And really what you look to fix those are the pads, the batteries, so they still have to be tested. So Unifirst would still charge you a fee if you wanted us to test them if you purchased them. Or you can rent those, like you were talking about tobacco, where you don't own them, but Unifirst would then maintain those AEDs, and if you ever left us, we take them back, and then we reinstall them and upgrade them throughout the life of the contract. Mm -hmm. So there are things there that, from a first aid safety side, I think there's a huge cost savings, and that's more in our world, in our little house, an area that's grown tremendously fast. Back to the uniforms, though, part of the service that we don't talk about is when uniforms start to wear themselves out and get old, not damage or, or loss, just age, Unifirst reinvests back into the employee and takes out the old garments and replaces with upgraded garments throughout the life cycle of why you have a contract. Um, and that's one of the reasons why the old judge, you know, really liked us a lot because the company before us, I don't think, did that. And he was very appreciative of the fact that he felt like he was getting his money worth out of using Unifirst. You know, I'm not here to nickel and dime you, and I understand that money is money, but what I'm here to provide you is the best service and pricing that I can give you. For making sure that we're doing what you need us to do. And really for us to do that is talking with the, the, the leaders of your departments that use us and getting that feedback whether or not we're doing our job correctly. I, I think uh, this is just me and you, you guys can, you know, motions are, but it can be made any time, but, uh, you know, I, I think we need to look at this until next meeting, maybe get a, uh, I'll put a committee together so we can get apples and apples. You know, it's kind of like what, what we have to go through has a price per thousand, and then yours are not broken down to the price per thousand. So we we got to get, we got to yeah. make comparisons to get to come up with something, uh, something fair. Uh, well, even what they spent last year with them is going to be higher because, I mean, they got soap and all that. And all right. You know, that's, right. And, and then yeah, I, it's all included in this one, too, Will. No, it's not. So it's not it included. It says it's big. Line right. number four. The only thing that is not included in this number. It's because you're not going to know really what that spin's going to be. It depends yeah. on how many, if, if, if you don't wash your hands, oh, you go to the bathroom, you just, the county just save money, that type of thing. You know what I mean? So the uniforms are going to be more of a constant of what you know, what you're spending. Um, but I mean, if you don't mind me asking, what would be the yearly spin right now that you have from Springfield with what you are already doing from an apple to apple? Does it tell you that? 
It's, well, well it's, it's got a figure. Yeah. You know, we, we don't need to okay. share that figure right say, now. Well, on ours, like I said, it, from what we're doing now, it's 165.08 would be the new pricing if we kept everything the same. But you're right, if they're pricing out cheaper garments um, or non-insurance, things like that, then, then there could be a higher or still a lower cost depending on what they want to go on there. Well, let's, uh, uh, with, with Dan, Dan, Will, and Zach, would you all mind putting a, you guys working as a committee and, and I would advise to, uh, of course, our office, uh, Brittany, Rachel, and also uh, get with Maggie and then get with the department heads as to, uh, you know, what garments they like. And uh, so we can, so we need to do a little more studying on this. I mean, y'all in agreement we need to do more study? Yes, I agree with that. Yeah, uh, and then if, if, and, and if you all can't do it, I know it's a busy time, but if one of you would, one of you three would not want to do it, then we'd rather someone else. We'll get, we'll get someone else. But, uh, but anyhow, would, would, would you mind you three just being on a committee and then we'll have a, you have a presentation for us next meeting? And, That'd be good. And Judge, if it would help, you know, if you all want to look instead of what you're doing now, look at what the departments want to get. Uh, we could meet with, when you all come together, I don't mind sitting down with you all, at least educating you on the uniform side. So that, because look, I know it's not rocket science, but there are a lot of, you know, hidden rocks in the program and sitting down and looking at all the different things included, including first aid safety, if you all want to look into that as well as one unit from a cost saving standpoint, because it's kind of like going to Sam's, right? You're buying in bulk. And we can help you out with that. And then when you all determine what it is that you want by talking to the department heads, then I can help you by help writing a proposal of these are the items that we want. And then I'll bid on these different items to see what you have. But again, I would take into consideration, you know, with uniforms, because there are so such so many moving parts, it's not just the weekly spend of what you're getting. There is the service component and what happens when someone does leave the program, which I will explain to you all and kind of give you some education. Is that fair? Right. Yeah, we'll, we'll be reaching out I mean, okay. the next two weeks. And Perfect. Come up with something. And I can help you on that. Would you all like to hold on to these samples at the moment? Uh, the I thought this was like Shark Tank. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it is. How much you got to do? What do they say? I'm out. Okay. <laughs> so, if you, would you all like to keep the committee? Would you all like to hold on the sample so you all can see uh, some of these things? I, I, I think that uh, I know the road department has samples. They I don't do. know whether EMS has samples of their uniforms. Are you talking about these to take home with us? Yeah, you can take them home. We're out in the yard and cut the grass. <laughs> the hills, you know? The <laughs> So, and the other thing I would I would look at too, as you're up in this committee together, is really the direct sell portion of like you have an embroidered garment here, and as do you. There's things there for the city um, or for the county that you all could purchase, and we'll have that versus going to a bunch of different vendors that could kind of break it down for you, where you know what your cost is going to be because you look at a catalog and know that I get this discount and with the embroidery that we have. So there are a lot of benefits. But again, I'll cover that for you, so at least you're aware of the big picture. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll be reached. The committee will be reaching out. Perfect. And, uh, We'll, we'll try to have a conclusion next meeting. Thank you all very much. Thank, all right. Thank you. Uh, now we're going to new business. This uh, administrative code. I uh, I just I would just uh, unless Corey has something to add to that, I will pull that and we'll discuss that another time. Okay. We'll we'll pull I'll pull that. We'll discuss that another time. Uh, second item is the uh, county clerk. Uh, I want to turn to that. Uh, yeah, basically uh, in your packet, uh, the way it's figured, uh, basically we go in $4,400 and 10 cents for uh, her uh, collecting these tax bits. And Lynn, if you'd like to add anything to that, that sums it up, doesn't it? <coughs> I'm just seeing this for the first time. I'm sorry. I, I don't know what page it's on. Or... This is in the yearly. package. In the package, page 72. Four. Well, her, her copy is that she presented to us is on 70, 74. 74, yeah. Okay. It looks like you signed it. But, but anyway. This is uh, yearly. It's, it's the. Um, it's sent from the state. They tell us how many motor vehicle uh, tax bills we prepared, 
you get 15 cents per bill, so it comes up to $4,400.10. So, yes, this is a yearly claim. Yeah. So, anyway, I'll, I'll entertain a motion for us to pay Lynn what we owe her. So, I'm going to make a motion that we pay uh, the $4,400.10 to the uh, uh, county clerk's office. All right. Second. Have a motion by Dan, second by Zach, uh, that we uh, uh, pay our clerk what we owe for collecting motor vehicle accounts of $4,400.10. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 You want to vote? Motion passes. Uh, EMS new hire, uh, Sean Johnson, uh, that's in our packet. You guys, a part time paramedic, entertain a motion for that approval. Chris, you'd like to speak to it? I mean, it's pretty self explanatory, yeah, I guess. Actually, uh, Sean retired from us uh, last September, I believe it was. And uh, he is, uh, I guess, retirement has got boring. He wants to come back to work part time for a little bit. So. Well, I'll uh, make a motion to uh, hire Sean Johnson for part time paramedic in 1984. All right, we have a motion. I'll second that. Motion by Zach, seconded by Dan, to hire a part-time paramedic, Sean Johnson, at 1984 an hour, and I'm sure that's uh, subject to the hiring qualifications. Yes. Uh, so, employee background check and uh, yeah. yeah. So, anyway, any other discussion on this? We're not saying that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're we're, right. we're doing the it's hiring just, it's common requirements. Well, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna make it uncommon. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, we're that, that they all, meet meet the hiring requirements. Yeah, it's just, it's always been our practice that they got to meet that. Yeah, right. Yeah, and always will. They still do. They still, still do. do. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a hiring requirement. Yeah. So anyway, any other discussion on this? Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, you want to vote? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Todd. Got you and Keith uh, in on the uh, bids for the blacktop and the rock. Well, uh, questions on uh, on the go quote. I'll go back to uh, Shelby County Asphalt uh, is a sister company in Mego, and what you see there is the. Uh, Asphalt braces, that's a F O B. That's, that's from their base. That's pickup. So that, that's why you see the one Shelby County asphalt did not bid to lay it uh, up throughout the county. Uh, Mago bid, and Mago is actually their current bid right now is ninety dollars and eighty cents delay service. They're actually a dollar thirty cheaper, and it is a fixed rate this year. So. Normally, how your asphalt companies work is uh, they go off of a uh, 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 well, say uh, black hop or uh, uh, I can't remember the first part of it. It's an index that they use, uh, the asphalt index, and it's it's based on per time or uh, the liquid emulsion that they get each month. The state does this. Uh, and by them going and, and stating in their quote right here, this uh, they do state that they are going to give us at a fixed price. So right. if as, as asphalt goes up, say fifteen dollars, you know a ton, uh, we're still going to get it at this rate. Uh, I got a question real quick, just for the as far as the pickup portion prices not laid. You know Shelbyville asphalt here has their prices. Where is that at? <coughs> Can y'all pick up in Shelby County at this place? Like if you yeah, wanted to just go, go get out of the house. I have personally not been there, but I believe it's over on by the uh, IMI, the concrete, but in that industrial area. I've never seen it. Turn right, right across there. from turn right across from Walmart. Yeah, it's back in there. Oh, yeah, right back, back in there and it's off to the right. right. We used to get basketball down there quite a bit. As, uh, as, as far as the, uh, now we'll get into the stone. Uh, as you look at it, there uh, should be three quotes for stone. 
uh, believe it or not, uh, Heidelberg uh, materials. Uh, a lot of their materials that we use are actually cheaper than the other two competitors. But uh, the reason being they're the more expensive uh, one at the top right now is because of their haul rate. Their haul rate is set at 1050 uh, per ton, you know, to, uh, for delivery. Uh, other than that, uh, their, their pricing will be lower. Now, Hayden Material, uh, doing a comparison between them and quality, uh, there's only one uh, specific item, uh, and it's 35 cents cheaper, and that's with the haul rate. Uh, is your 57 stone. Uh, other than that, quality uh, is lower on every one of their, their products except for the 57 stone. Uh, my recommendation on that would be uh, to use quality, but the thing about it is, what's the quality is all right? Oh, I understand. Seven pictures. And then they did have their, go ahead, we all start. Well, I was just thinking, I, I don't understand why we couldn't use, you know, maybe you guys talk to you as well. Why can't we use both of them? Like, we're a quality. I do. And you guys are working on that side of town. That's a no brainer. I do. I, I was getting ready to get right into that. If we're on this side of town, you know, that, 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 that 35 cent savings is, you know, and there's there's been times, especially when we, we've done these uh, FEMA projects, uh, availability of different <coughs> trucks, yeah. you know. I wouldn't want a crew standing out here paying them by the hour and can't get trucks, right. you know, for rock, but I can get them out of hate or I can get them out of quality or I can, you know. I, I think this is more or less just approach so we can stop power rock at the baller, I think, what this is not really good. Right? Basically, right on the road. basically. Yeah. You know, because, so. you know, if, if, if you're up there close to Jefferson County line, you're working yeah. up there on the beach or you don't want them hauling that bar sound, you know. Uh, Jeff Stone's right there. You know, it might be probably still more expensive than coming all the way from bar sound. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm trying to get at. It's just that all depends on where you're at in the county. Now, the, the asphalt prices is finally fixed in, in one of the bids. Uh, they, they have never stated that in one of their bids. That is that is a fixed price for a year. It's you always adjusted. Yeah, you, you recommend the May go and quality? Today? Yes. Just, yeah, for the, for the biz. And then as far as the stone, it's going to be availability because there's there's not that much in price difference on these guys. Could, could we just, uh, could, 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 could we just, could, could we just approve uh, qual quality and well, just let him. I, I thought at one point you could both approve them all, and then I was told you can't. Well, we could go up to quality as the main one. Yes. And if you need some more else, then your discretion. But at least we've got one locked in. So we need a lock in Mago. Yeah, Mago and Quality. Yeah. I, I might be able to explain this even more too. We used to even advertise and do bids, the quadrants around the county, but the others said we had to, you have to bid one. You had to award the bids to one. We used to accept all of the bids there one time. And yeah, they, they, were, they, they, they sent the county off in the uh, yeah. checkerboard. Well, I like so, this name, they proved Mago, that's not comparable. No one else bid to lay the asphalt. So, but, but anyway, like Doug said to the auditors, we got to have an approval. Quick question. Or yeah. So, Bardstown, seventy dollars for uh, the two-minute base, and uh, Shepherdsville is fifty-five fifty. Is that what is? What's the difference in pricing just from where you're picking it up from? One of them paying more for their rock. Yeah, in material, the other one's getting cheaper. Yeah. It's hard to believe it's that much. Isn't it? Yeah, and then two quarries yeah. are not very far away from each other. Uh, right. So, I mean, do we have, uh, I mean, do we always go with the cheapest one? Because that's a that's a big difference. Well, well, that's what we're well they put that on there, but uh, right now we're not we're not laying our own asphalt. We, that's just for picking oh, up. That's just for picking up. up. So, like, you can want to take the hot box out there and get some on or whatever. Yeah, it, yeah. Uh, whatever's been Yeah, we need a, a hot load real quick, you know, in the summer. When Todd's got her paper up there and everything, he'll be able to get a load of <laughs> Used to have So, so what'd you say it was that they, their price for late? Delay it? Yeah. Like they're $90 a ton or 82 No, it's, yeah, it's $89.50. Yeah. Okay, is that what I was getting over? Yeah, hey, no, the, the, the quote I gave you is what we're paying now. 
uh, it's actually ninety dollars and eighty cents. Oh, okay. they're actually cheaper. So they actually went down. They actually went down. Yes. Okay, that's where I was getting confused. I thought you were telling me that it was something else. Yeah, but in, but they also do lock it in because if not the uh, the asphalt index, uh, they were going off of that, and that changes and that varies. And I'll give you a good example. Uh, when I put a list of, of discretionary runs together, and then somehow in the last administration, I don't know what what happened. But uh, I was trying to get them to get this passed before July 1 uh, on the <coughs> payment some of these drones. So uh, the actual estimate of, of asphalt was 1.4 million that I figured up. And just by one day's figure, you know, going from May or June to July, that asphalt index went up twenty something dollars, so it was, it was almost like a four four hundred thousand dollar hit. So it really aided what we could do with the money we'd appropriate. If 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 they were to pay. Yeah, right. So, well, I make a motion to appoint quality stone for a rock and Nago construction for asphalt in the same sentence to use the judgment. See me use a material. Yeah, uh, obviously. Second. I right, have a motion by Wheel, saying by Mike, to approve the MAGO and quality on the bids. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 You want both? Motion passes. Thank you, Todd. I was almost last, Mike. Uh, <laughs> the sorry, I didn't the, uh, the re reappointment, the uh, reapportionment committee. Uh, Corey may have a little bit of info about that, but I'll. Uh, uh, just, just you can go a, ahead. Just a little overview. Uh, it's usually the census. It's a little sooner in the process, but given COVID, the late census and so forth, it's taking place this year. Uh, reinforcement, just redrawing the magisterial line so that they are as close in population as possible. Perhaps you can take notice to stay down, put you all in different districts, so on and so forth. Um, we will have to do a notice in the newspaper. Uh, uh, when the committee will meet, um, that, you know, so I think an action item would be to go ahead and approve an advertisement. Um, I don't know what date yet because we're going to work on and around the election schedule as well, um, because Lynn is not a member of the committee. Um, I talked to Jeff Sopler and he said that the deadline to get a ad in for the next paper is the Friday before publication. So. Uh, we wouldn't be able to get it in for this Wednesday, so uh, <coughs> that might that will run us up against election week. So uh, just have that on your radar. Um, I would say go ahead and get approval for uh, a notice in the magnet, um, and then when we get um, members together, we will come to this report so that they you all can officially appoint them, uh, and then notice the process of redrawing the lines. They'll have a timeline, and then. Over here with you all for comments um, and so forth. So, um, kind of an overview right now, but uh, basically just need the notice requirement taken care of, and then I'll work with them on finding the date that we would get for um, the people to get a phone date. So, we may, have, we may have to end up doing, sorry to catch up, uh, we may end up having, whether it's the next meeting or a special meeting, I'll, I'll talk to the we will follow that. So, so I was right. What you were saying, you were talking faster than what I was right in a nutshell. You got to put it out in the in the paper mm. for people that are interested in being appointed to this committee. No, it's it's just the notice that the committee will meet. Um, it, you you got to provide the notice. It's different from just like a regular meeting or like a special meeting. It's just who makes up the committee? Uh, well, this will three, four, four, three, people. three people. Three people. Okay. One, uh, they can't be from the same district, so you're not going to have all five districts represented, but that would be 21 years or older. They've got to be uh, three separate magisterial districts, and then um, the clerk is a non-voting member. But okay. um, KIPTA has the software, and it's pretty pretty intuitive, pretty easy to use, and it's kind of it's very helpful because it'll have breakdowns of each district, and then obviously once the committee meets, they'll report to this report and answer any questions you may have. Uh, what is also need approval on rate of pay for the commissioners per day, um, rate of pay. per day rate of pay? Do you, do you have a recommendation on? Um, 
other clerk suggested the same rate of pay that the tax board of assessments gets, and that's $100 a day. Okay. So, uh, 100 or 60 Tax board of assessment is a hundred dollars. The state pays half, and the county pays half of that for the tax board of assessment. Um, that's that was a recommendation. The, the other day, it kept to Thursday when I went, went there. They explained this, and, and basically, uh, this committee has to be put together in May, and then they have sixty days to have a to get get the drawing all done. Now they shared that. Uh, that the KIPTA folks have already got a map kind of laid out. Uh, can we get a copy of that? Uh, when can we get a copy of that? It's it's kind of the, on the software. I don't know if there's a. I mean, okay. it, the final the final map or the proposed map would be what the committee would report back to the report um, because you know until you actually go through the process of deciding which precinct goes in which district, it's it's you know the, the only final map that's currently is the current map that we have. So uh, the, the new map would have to be, once the committee meets, they will go precinct by precinct and then they'll bring it here. Uh, that's, that's my understanding. I, I think that's the process. Um, because otherwise you have to do the map, yeah. the overlay of the map, yeah. we'll do that. Um, our role is moving voters if we have to move voters and the lines of the actual precincts if we have to move streets. Yeah. Um, and that map is not done yet. That's something the, that the committee will work on. Right? Yeah. Well, the, the other day, my understanding, they, they had a they had a, a draft or a suggestion mm -hmm. that was already with, they said within 180 people. Of course, they, each district has to be within five percent of the next. And I think they said it was 300 and something was five percent. I, I don't. But anyway, they said we're well below where we need to be. But anyway, that's fine. But basically, we'll, uh, if you guys have some names uh, to suggest, uh, you know, that, that in you guys' districts, and like Corey said, we can only can only select three. Essentially, the only reason why I was asking, and I, I was going to put it out uh, publicly amongst my constituents, if anybody would, you know, show interest or anything like that, I might uh, take their information or do I refer them to, to you or you. Uh, I mean, who do they need to go see? I mean, either. Yeah. Okay. We've got we've got one name. Mr. Fetter has expressed an, uh, an interest, and he's in the Elk Creek precinct. So, um, so yeah, I already have someone in Taylorville, and I have someone in Waterford. Oh, okay. Also, now, is Lynn a is is she the fourth of the? She's she's a fourth member. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Not the <coughs> not the not member. And you all know, might want to make a suggestion that's from years past if you want to go from three to eight or maybe approve that this board will be, you know, $100 a meeting, $60 a meeting, or whatever, even now, too, because it may make a difference if somebody's willing to serve them or not, too. Of course, what Doug's talking about is we could actually change the magistrate districts, too. Not, I don't really suggest that. Well, well, you can three people on it. No, 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 no. You can go from five to eight. Yeah. Yeah. Or you can go down to three. I don't think we've got that big. No. But, uh, so, but, but anyway, yeah, we, you know, this is the time that that change that can be made. The committee people going from three. No, he's talking about the districts. We can make it over here. Eight, eight districts. I think Doug was talking about the committee. Yeah, no, I was talking about here. Oh, uh, the magistrate. Because, I mean, what I'm getting at. If y'all wanted to see that change, it would be easier to know up front before they start meeting if they either wanted to go to eight or if you want to go down to three or stay at five when they start okay, splitting it up. If they know y'all want to stay at five like it is now, that's what they're going to be. I think we got a fair representation and to go to eight might get too many. Yeah. And you know, probably uh, in reality, uh, our districts may not change at all. Right. So. Well, they're going to take some. Yeah. Elk Creek's going to shrink. Elk yeah. Creek is going to shrink from the preliminary map. Um, Waterford might get a little bit bigger. Uh, Camp Ranch is going to get maybe a little bit bigger ge uh, geographically. Um, well, between Camp Branch and Mount Eden, you all got the biggest land mass. Um, obviously, Elk Creek's the most compact. Taylorsville might lose just a little bit. I mean, well, what are you going to have? I think everything just south of 44? 
I've got yeah, pretty much yes. <laughs> One other thing that we're going to have to consider up to up to this point in time, the school districts mirror the magisterial districts. So we have to present this to them as well so they can vote on having their lines align with the magisterial districts. Because if they don't, it makes uh, elections ten times harder because you have split districts. You have a school district that overlaps the magisterial district. And there's lots of regulations. It's better this time than it was ten years ago. Ten years ago, we had three state reps and um, two U.S. congressional districts. You can't cross those lines. So there's a lot of rules in place. And 10 years ago, we did a lot of on our hands um, making the maps because you have to do what's called, it's like a meets and bounds description. And uh, we had Curtis Oaks who graciously helped us. Jamie Brown knows somebody in Bullitt County who might be able to do that type of map description because not only do you have to do your um, numbers, get your numbers right, you have to do a physical description of those boundary lines, like a street to a tree to a creek to a rock. Um, there's going to be legislation proposed. Go ahead, No, just. There's going to be legislation proposed that all future maps are going to have to be done by GIS or GPS mapping, which makes more sense. Yeah, which the Kipta guy is a he's a GIS specialist. So, oh, he is a lot. <laughs> but anyway, we need to, uh, you know, that, that was something we need to act on pretty quick and get basically the next meeting. We've got a lot of stuff for the next meeting. Uh, Can't wait. So, uh, it is. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Scott said, I we, we'll be out here for 12. I guarantee you that. Yeah, <laughs> next meeting is going to be about midnight. This next meeting is going to be an hour and a half. I'm still trying. Before the election. Uh, but uh, anyway, that uh, thank you for that information. But uh, you guys, if you have someone that's uh, passionate about working on getting the lines drawn, uh, please share the names. We will. Uh, yeah. We'll come back next meeting. Can right. we we'll go ahead and get approval on? You need a motion to advertise. Add the magnet. Yes. Rate of pay for one hundred dollars per day for the members of the. I like that motion. All right, we have a motion by Zach, second by Me. Mike, Thank you. to uh, advertise for this uh, reapportionment and also to pay $100 per day for their work. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Next on the agenda, and you see in your cover sheet, the uh, Tax Board of Assessors, uh, and it talks about the, uh, uh, on the next page, and Basically, uh, I will appoint someone, the mayor appoints someone, and then the court appoints someone, and I believe this one is the one the court appoints, uh, I think. But uh, anyway, uh, Susan Nichols uh, has agreed uh, to this position. Uh, I don't know, a lot of you probably know her. Uh, she's a realtor, and if you see the rules, they all have to have uh, experience with that and she meets all these qualifications. So I would entertain a motion to approve the appointing Susan Nichols for the tax assessor board. Motion to approve Susan Nichols <coughs> to the tax board assessors. All right, is there a second? I'll second. I have a motion by Zach, seconded by Dan, to appoint Susan Nichols to the board of tax assessors. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Invoices, bills, and transfers. Does anyone have a question about anything for myself or Doug? Motion to pay the bills, make the transfers. Motion by Zach to pay the bills, make the transfers. Is there a second? No second. Seconded by Will. Is there any discussion? Um, I had. I know there was some outstanding bills. I guess that Lynn acquired with a. Uh, Trading company and something with Brumpy. Where's that falling in here? I'll refer that to Doug. Um, County Clerk's water right there. What, what line are we looking on? Yeah, it, it, well, so I've got a dumpster and uh, she had a spreading company coming in and just some shredding. I want to make sure that that's going against 
one of her line items and not coming out with something else. Where is that at, Mr. Stump? I'm, I'm asking where it's at. <laughs> yeah, and it may not show up on here yet. Yeah, well, I don't think we've got the bill on it yet. So, that probably would be the end of this. I don't know, probably in the next few days it'll come in and the bill's end of the month. Yeah, I'll, I'll, track, I'll keep a watch on that, Mike, and I'll let you know when we get to the figures on that. Right. I, I don't think it's in this report. I just, I just want to make sure if the clerk's spending money that's going against the clerk's, uh, you know, line item. Um, I, don't, I don't remember, uh, as remember the court approving uh, another shredding company to come in. Um, my recollection is that you know, the judge is the only one that has discretionary spending power, um, which I would discourage the clerk doing that in the future. Excuse me? Um, so I just want to make sure that if she does spend money, that it goes towards one her line out. All right, any other discussion? All right, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Pay the bill. Now we have a communication from citizens. Is there anyone here to speak? All right. Seeing none, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion by that. Second. Second. By will. All those in favor say aye. 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 We're adjourned. I told you it would be pretty hard. Now it was a little beyond 45 minutes. Hello, oh, JB. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Bring it up next week.